Hi everybody, welcome to Dynamo Sword Channel. I'm David, and today on Dynamo Sword Channel, I will be reviewing the Windless Munich Town Guard Sword. This sword is a classic in Windless's line of Renaissance era swords, and one with much variety in the sword community. So, after all these years on the market, how does this intricate hilted sword fare against other swords of its type on the market today? Well, stay tuned and we'll find out. The Munich Town Guard Sword is a direct replica of a well-documented 17th century sword housed in the Wallace Collection of England. Made for the Town Guard of the Bavarian capital of Munich, it featured a broader cut and thrust blade and simple swept hilt guard. Believed to have been designed in the early 17th century, this was a time when Munich was a center of counter-reformation and renaissance arts. The sword type is what would be known as a rapier, or more specifically the military rapier or side sword. This sword was an evolution of the more standard riding and arming swords of the late Middle Ages. With the rapier, the hilt became more intricate, adding various complex hand defenses such as loop guards, back guards, knuckle guards, shell cups, and ring guards. The blades themselves became thinner and more thrust oriented, similar to earlier examples such as the types 15, 17, 18, or more specifically type 18D of the Oakshot typology. The cross section was commonly a pronounced or flattened diamond, but many also featured hexagonal cross sections as well. Many of these blades also featured thin ricasso to help in gripping the forefinger around the quillion block for a grip that promotes thrusting. The primary difference between the two types of rapier, or as they're more officially dubbed, the civilian rapier and military rapier, is the blade itself. The military rapier is, broad, is a broader, shorter blade, similar to a later period cut and thrust sword of the Middle Ages whereas the civilian rapier is much thinner and longer, with a blade length equal to a longsword. As mentioned earlier, there is a placement for the rapier blade in the Oakshot typology. For earlier types of rapier, uh, there is the subtype known as 18D. The type 18D was popular during the 15th and 16th centuries, and this type can be seen in many earlier rapier and military rapier of the time. Featuring a thin, acutely tapering blade profile, diamond and cross section, and sometimes with fullering of various lengths and styles. The civilian rapier has had definitely much more notoriety as it has been romanticized in much literature and film over the years. For example, The Three Musketeers by Alexandre Dumas or Romeo and Juliet by William Shakespeare. Though the military rapier type seems to have been more popular historically, as its cut and thrust design was used for nearly three centuries. Though both types would uh, see an evolution to uh, them in the late 17th and early 18th century, with the military rapier evolving to the basket hilt type military swords and the civilian rapier to the dueling small swords and or court swords of the time. Overall, the rapier was a significant evolution of the European sword in both hilt protection and of course blade design, but also the rapier defined and definitely romanticized its type as a thing of beauty and artistry respected and renowned to this day. So now let's look at the overall statistics of this sword. Its overall length is 40 inches. It has a weight of three and a half pounds. The point of balance is two inches from the hilt with the center of percussion at 22 inches from the hilt. 
Again, the class of sword is what would be known as a rapier or more specifically a military rapier or side sword. Now, the blade's total length is 33 inches and that includes the ricasso. The blade width at the ricasso is one inch and that swells to one and a half inches at the ring guard and then that sharply tapers to half an inch at the tip. The material is a 1065 high carbon steel with a mirror finish. The cross section is a flattened diamond cross section and the blade type technically post dates the oak shot typology but you could um, classify it as a later period oak shot type 18D. Now we'll look at the guard. So the guard's total length or technically quillion length is five and a quarter inches. The quillion dimensions are three eighths by a quarter inch and the back guard and loop guard external circumference here is 15 inches. Its internal circumference is 14 inches while the knuckle guard depth is two inches and the knuckle guard length is three and a half inches. The ring guard depth from the Ricasso is one inch. The material is a mild steel with a mirrored polish and the style is what would be known as a swept hilt style or more specifically a three-quarter hilt style. Now you might be wondering what a three-quarter hilt is so I'll uh, explain that real quick. A three-quarter hilt is based on how much uh, intricate hilting the um, sword has. For example, a full swept hilt would be what you see on more standard civilian rapiers with shell guards, uh, two quillions, and a full knuckle guard. A three-quarter hilt is primarily having everything, even to an extent some even have shell guards, but primarily it's lacking that um, extra extension of quillion on the back side so it is um, described as a three-quarter hilt. Um, a quarter hilt, for example, is more what you'd see on uh, you know, later period uh, rapier or type um, 19 intricate hilts where you will have ring guards and loop guards and quillions, but normally not a knuckle guard. The handle's total length is three and a half inches. It has a base circumference of three and three eighths of an inch and that tapers to three inches at the pommel. The material is wood and the grip material is a twisted wire wrap which is nickel plated for finish. The pommel's total length is two and three quarters inches. The pommel's total circumference is five and one eighths of an inch. And the material like the guard or hilt is a uh, mild steel with a mirror polish. The hilt construction is uh, a full screw on pommel. And the pommel type would uh, be considered a uh, unclassified ovate or oval type. So in regards to the scabbard, this sword comes with your usual standard windless hard leather scabbard with steel throat and chain. As with most windless swords, it fits moderately well but is rather loose. There is no friction fit and due to the weight of the hilt 
the blade of course slides out quite easily. Also, some may not like the fact that the uh, Riscasso is exposed um, and kind of left out and I know that can be a uh, you know sort of detriment to its you know the health of the Ricasso with exposed steel though this was something that was quite common um, you know for uh, you know production um, side swords and military rapier on the market mainly because of the um, loop guards and ring guards kind of enclosing around the Ricasso which doesn't allow the um, you know the scabbard to move up you know this was also seen on historical rapier scabbards as well and sometimes a remedy um, even in today with the production swords is to leather wrap the ricasso to um, prevent it from rusting or or you know not looking very appealing Overall, the Windless Munich is a nice replica of the old Munich style town guard swords and of course other three quarter hilt military rapier of the time period. The only real complaint I have um, regarding this sword is the hilt seems a little overbuilt and thick which I feel adds extra weight to the overall sword. Though the balance is low, making this sword very maneuverable and comfortable to handle. The fit and finish is nice and there are no casting flaws or bends or twists to um, the overall basket and hilt. The blade is nicely shaped and has a nice profile taper, though some might find the blade a little too flexible or whippy to their liking. This is an older model of the sword um, that I purchased secondhand from the Sword Buyer's Guide Forum Classified. So perhaps newer models are stiffer in the blade, as I've seen with um, many reissued windless swords in the last couple years. The grip is very comfortable and the wire wrapping is well done. There is no looseness to the wire and the grip is nicely shaped and comfortable to wield. The pommel is solid and the threading holds tight and doesn't loosen without actual effort to unscrew it. Overall I really like this sword and feel it is one of the better windless models available. This sword also has a companion parrying dagger available. It's equal, it equally meets the sword's fit and finish and matches the sword well. I wanted to focus on the sword itself, so I will do a review of the parrying dagger at a later date. So, if you are looking for a nice swept hilt sword of the 16th, 17th century, or specifically a military type rapier of the sub, at the sub $300 price point, I highly recommend this sword. So, I hope you enjoyed this review of the Windless Munich Town Guard sword. Be sure to like and subscribe as well as look forward to the cut and review with follow-up discussion. Thanks again for watching and I'll see you next time.